Welcome to our lecture online and today we're going to talk about physics in particular we're going to talk fluid dynamics and starting out we're talking about fluid flow and what that means is we have let's say a pipe and through the pipe we have fluid flowing in this direction right here with a velocity equal to 4 meters per second and let's say that the, that the diameter, diameter of the pipe is 0 0.1 meters now imagine that a small amount of time goes by, let's say take a section of the fluid right here which, which I have indicated and let's say in a small amount of dt the fluid flows to the right just a little bit so the fluid would displace itself by a small amount, let's say dx, in a small amount of time dt and so we can then calculate the amount of volume of water or fluid, whatever it may be, has moved from this position to this position. So we want to know the volume of the section right here. Of course, this is a pipe. This has a cross-sectional area. Uh, let's call it A. And then it's moved a small amount dx. So the volume of that, we can call it dv, that would be equal to the area of the base, which is A, the area, times the height of that volume, which would be dx. And then we can say that if that amount of volume moved from there to there in this amount of time, we can say that dv dt is equal to a times dx dt. And of course dx dt, we already know what that means, that's equal to the velocity of the fluid. So we can say that dv dt is equal to a times x. Oh, not x, v. <laughs> dx dt is v. All right. Now, if we want to know the fluid flow through a pipe, we simply have to take the cross-sectional area and multiply times the velocity. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is equal to the cross-sectional area, so that would be pi r squared times the velocity v. And of course, we're not given the radius, we're given the diameter, so that would be equal to pi times the diameter over 2 quantity squared times v or we could say that's equal to pi times d squared times v over 4 because 2 squared is 4 and now we can plug in the numbers that we have so this would be equal to pi diameter would be 0 0.1 meter and that would be squared velocity 4 meters per second and then divide the whole thing by 4 and you can see that uh, this 4 cancels out that 4 and it would be 0 0.01 meters um, squared times meters per second. So meters squared times meters meters cubed per second. That is indeed volume per unit time. And so that would be equal to 0 0.01 pi or 0 0.0314 cubic meters per second. So that's how we find the amount of fluid that flows through a pipe per unit time. It's simply the product of the cross-sectional area times the velocity. And just to have it as a check, you can imagine that if we take a section of fluid in that pipe and we wait one second, that section of fluid will have moved a distance of four meters if it moves at four meters per second. So in essence, what's going on here is we have a section of pipe that's four meters long and in one second it has displaced itself by four meters. So the fluid flow that we found here should be equal to the amount of volume that moves through the pipe in one second. And so if we kind of think about it, if we make a section like this of fluid, we know that this is the cross-sectional area and this is the length. In this case, the length would be four meters because that's how far the fluid travels in one second. And we try to find the volume of that. The volume would be the area of the base times the length. That would be equal to pi r squared times four meters. The r would be half the diameter, so th this would be pi times 0 0.05 meters, um, that would be squared, times 4 meters. And now, just to, just to make sure we did this right, if we multiply all this out, we should get the same quantity in cubic meters, which would be the volume associated with the flow rate. So let's try that. So we have uh, 0 0.05, we square that, times 4, and times pi. And sure enough, that gives us a volume of 0 0.0314 meters cubed. So you see how that works. Now, one more thing. Let's take a look at dv dt. That's the flow rate of the fluid. Now, regardless of what the pipe does, let's say the pipe gets narrower, gets wider, it doesn't matter. 
the amount of fluid that flows through the pipe, regardless of what the pipe is doing, it can go up, it can go down, it can get big, it gets small, the volume per unit time that flows through the pipe has to stay constant. Otherwise, you would build up extra fluid or you'd get rid of fluid somehow. Magically, that can't happen. So you know that this is always constant. So we can say that dv dt must always stay constant. And if that's true, which it is, then we can say that the product of a times v also must be constant. So we can say that a times v must be constant. And if that's true, which again it is, we can then say that a times v anywhere along the pipe, anywhere inside the pipe, is always the same no matter where we go. So if we pick one point in the pipe right there, we call it point one. We pick another point in the pipe right here, which we call point two. We know that a times v here must equal a times v there. In other words, we can say that a1 times v1 must equal a2 times v2. And this equation will help us later on in the fluid flow problems. And so in our next example, we'll go ahead and take use of that. So, what we need to know now at this point is that we need to know that dv dt is equal to a times v and we also need to know that a1v1 must equal a2v2. So let me show you an example of how to apply that.